Ladies and gentlemen, very quickly, we're going to be transiting ourselves into a fireside chat where our leading three discussants are going to walk the talk. They're going to talk about data to intelligence to outcome, learning the best practices from experts in data analytics and strategy for building high outcome learning systems. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm all set uh, to invite them because uh, ob the objective for most companies, you would agree, is to prioritize the strong employee engagement and the company culture, right? So that makes this unmissable, the discussion. Please welcome the co-founder and CEO of Vani.coach, Ashish Shah, on the stage. One more time with a good round of cheer, everybody. Ashish Shah, and a very warm welcome back onto the stage. Let's also welcome Ranjan Kant, the co-founder and president of EarthMade. Hi, Ranjan. Good to be seeing you again. And uh, please welcome Anand Thuli, the Vice President, Head Analytics and Decision Sciences, Vedantu. So that's Anand, Ashish, Ranjan, uh, up to the three fine gentlemen to lead the talk and get conversational. Thank you. Right, so I definitely do not envy your position having to pay attention to so many people at the same time. Um, I'm repeating myself, I said this uh, earlier as well, that apart from the US dollar, human attention is the most appreciating currency. So to be able to, for you to pay attention, we need to earn it. So we'll try and do our best to earn your attention. Um, before I begin, I'd like to quickly uh, talk a little bit more about uh, the two gentlemen here. Um, Anand does cutting edge work in using data to find actionable intelligence, especially when his organization is in the space of education technology. So whether it is about learning effectiveness or it is about finding the right balance of uh, expenditures, many different areas, and uh, that's where we would want to learn from him, that what are some of the insights that we can drive and use in the space of learning. Um, remember somebody said that uh, each learning team now needs a good analyst and a good marketeer. So you need these two people along with your learning specialist. So Anand would want to listen from you. And Ranjan, um, he's from, he used to work with the Boston Consulting Group. He was the partner data sciences and has now moved to a startup. Uh, Ranjan's organization does cutting edge work in the space of fintech. So what they're doing is going to redefine the way we are thinking about lending and other things. I, that's where my understanding exhausts. So I'd like to begin by asking you both this question that uh, one of our earlier panelists said that there's so much data around and it's at so many places. How do we think about using data to draw intelligence which can be built for better learning outcome. Right. So, uh, so you, usually it's a uh, when when we when we talk about data, it, everybody gets very very excited about you know how how in the last decade or so the the right usage of data has not only provided uh, great business outcomes but also great experience outcomes. Right. Uh, 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 data as 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 an element, data as an asset is a very abstract asset, right? Or uh, on its own, if you if you if you guys you know, really think of it, it's it's nothing but bits and bytes stored somewhere, right? The real value of data comes out with respect to how exactly do you make it useful, right? There are there are multiple ways, there are multiple technologies, and there are multiple processes or loops which. Uh, hoops which you have to, you know, kind of jump to be able to get data or, or get the value out of that particular data, right? Just to give you a, per, just just to give you a quick uh, perspective with respect to uh, at Vedantu, for example, we have clearly two aspects of data usage. One is towards customer. One is towards business, right? Uh, in both the cases, right, for the students as well as internal stakeholders, right, there are three roles which we primarily play, right. The first one is the enabler role, right. We call it business governance, right. This is this is to enable teams, leaders, as well as their managers to make the right decisions, right. Usually, uh, 
all the data driven intelligence has been proven to be much much more effective than whatever comes out of uh, uh, of of the gut right so the data there is used to make the tactical strategic as well as operational level decisions on a daily basis right the second role which data plays is towards intelligence right so the idea here is that data analytics and data sciences as a team by bringing their capability onto the table to find out the micro cohorts for that example right bring predictions bring bring much more preferences and prescriptions onto the table for managers to do their jobs better right again for the both aspects the business outcomes aspect as well as experience and learning outcome aspects of it the third one is the decision sciences and the engines part as we call it where data analytics and data sciences take leadership position in in solving critical and usually big hairy big hairy problems for example defining learning outcomes and creating learning journeys right uh, which which uh, which are which are not really possible without you know kind of deep intelligence and mlai and you know rest of the technologies right so so that is the role primarily which data analytics and data sciences plays at vedantu i believe that answers your question thank you anand so ranjan uh, in fact both of you occupy the position of what we would call as an internal customer for people in hr and learning um and you have transition to a role where you're building an organization and you need to ensure that the capabilities of different teams are built at the right pace so as someone who has worn the advisor cap for a very long time for organizations across the globe and now being in the position of an internal customer how would you want us to think uh, as we move into the next phase of learning thanks ashish thanks anand so ashish you know i am a nerd right so what happened was when i moved from bcg uh, and um, uh, at bcg we used to work for very large companies and some of the stuff i saw today is very exciting where uh, human resources in general is headed um, we also even in bcg we were a thousand person org right so so uh, the human resources was a very um, evolved topic so as to say right Where, but today uh, the the company i run we have around 130 people which we have built to in two years i think the first and obvious challenge is to get uh, people excited and join our company that that's the that was the first challenge we faced and uh, we don't have we, we didn't have the pedigree or a standing of a of a org that's where i think the first uh, bit of data science that helped us we actually figure uh, we so we are a hundred, uh, bunch of 130 people and we are all i would call um, not not in terms of capability but highly skilled folks data scientists tech tech ga tech geeks uh, product managers and things like that we we do have a bd team but but most of us are tech data science oriented so the way at least we figured out we needed to build our team was uh, we did some kind of feature engineering on the kind of people you know on the kind of roles that people get hired to and some of the things we found out were very obvious but but you know uh, that helped us be in good stead one of the things we figured out was thin staffing instead of really building a team up front you know pushing it up we would really start with one or two people solving a project even a department and that uh, you know driven with technology and data would would be a huge impetus for very pedigreed people to come and join us that i found was a huge game changer for me in in terms of who we could hire in terms of just building the org as anand was saying uh, data informs decisions informs leaders i think what is also important is applying some of the cool data science principles which we all hear in marketing right personalization i saw some personalized learning being talked about today but but uh, personalization what is super super cool about personalization is you can create nudges you don't have to be overt about the signals you send out what are the kind of nudges that different parts of your org need to be excited is very very cool you know uh, whether whether the, the 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 person is looking for uh, for more 
active participation, is looking for more leadership. And there are signals if we could build data on, is very, very cool. The last thing I think, Ashish, where, given that I come from a, um, we have a NBFC too, which is a regulated entity. I think consent is super important. We have a lot of data, and as Anand spoke about, you can dig a data from anywhere and any uh, and any bit. But I think having consent of the people you are going to run that data science on is super super critical. And we need to figure out in our systems if we are capturing the right consent and how we go about it. Thank you, Ranjan. Um, n the nudges bit is interesting because uh, that's where a lot of intelligence is required. So uh, n equal to one is something we all uh, want to achieve. Anand, the, uh, I'd want you to simplify things a little bit for us. Many of us uh, possibly are hearing certain phrases for the first time. So if an organization wants to, let's say, improve their learning outcome by 30%, right? And they would want to look at the data that's available or build ways to, uh, or understand how to look at the data. Uh, what would you do if you were the one who was solving the problem? So one or two actionable insights that I can go back and start applying from tomorrow morning. Ashish, if I, if I can just add to your question, right? Yeah. So, Anand, we come from very different setups. Your org has a lot of ops as well, which we don't. We have a very small portion. How do you look at different segments? How do you manage that uh, spectrum of from ops to data science people to tech? Uh, that will be very interesting to hear about. There you go. Great. So, uh, so I'll talk about both of them. Uh, uh, frankly, the answer to both of them is, is very, very simple, right? Uh, as such, learning as a process is a very, very effortful process, right? And our brains, our minds are uh, tuned to, you know, to, uh, to really resist anything which is, which, is, which is very, very effortful, right? And in the old times, we used to call this mugging, right? Where we're just trying to remember everything. And now, in, in today's date, it's, it's mostly what we are talking about is the learning outcome, right? Uh, what the the way from the from our experience and different experiments what we have what we have figured out is and, and and just just to lay out the kind of students which we work with we work with pre nursery nursery uh, grade one to five six to eight to the kids who are actually uh, preparing for their JE NEET right uh, we are we are talking about students coming from different different walks of life having Diff, you know, they, they, they live in uh, different segments of society. Uh, all of them coming onto Vedantu platform to learn as well as to have fun, right? Now, the idea here is, and just to, and since you uh, asked me to simplify it, the idea there is simple, right? Behind every action which students do, there is a, there is a, there is an inherent sense of purpose, right? That purpose might not be learning. That purpose might just be engaging, right? That purpose might just be having fun. That purpose might just be preparing for exams without even learning at times, right? Now, the idea here is, right, in, if, if you would be designing a particular system towards learning outcome and personalized, personalized learning as, as uh, I've been hearing for a while on this platform, the idea is to, the best, per, best way to figure out what is the inherent purpose, right? What is the learning is learning is leading to what, right? That inherent purpose gives you a very clear idea with respect to what exactly or what kind of learning a particular student, a particular individual or a particular professional is looking for, right? The second important part is to understand who is there to learn for that purpose, right? Different individuals learn differently they they get motivated because of different reasons by di doing different things they 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 go through a different emotional cycle while learning as well right some actually start learning because of anxiety and fear whereas some of the pe some of the students or some of the professional they actually go for pride right they feel pride just because they are into that particular learning outcome right because they are in in that particular learning journey right what this would help 
the systems, right, and processes to design the learning journey, which is very, very relevant, right? And this is where data sciences and data analytics comes into picture, right? We're talking about pers if you're talking about personalized learning, and learning is not happening at that particular moment, right? Learning is more of a journey. How exactly you would curate that particular journey to get the best outcome possible, given we are in dearth of time, focus, and attention in nowadays, right? That is where that is where the secret sauce is. Thank you, Anand. So, um, if I understand you correctly, what you're saying is that just like our marketing functions go and do a customer sentiment analysis, we should also go look for learning sentiment about people and possibly we can find some enablers from there. Right. Uh, it's wonderful. Right. So, yeah. so, um, so, uh, so, I would just uh, pick on what Anand said. So in marketing, right, when you do customer targeting, that is what data science is one of the biggest use cases are. You first of all create a customer 360. Now I have seen, and I'm sure all of us have seen multiple job roles, their job components, JDs, but, but, but I'm not sure if we have run a full scale data analytics, let's say many of us would be in a, in a company of 10,000 people, Just, and, and many would have come and gone. Just running that, uh, that rule using using a data science bit to understand what are what are the the, the pieces of a job role that are exciting that are, that that become challenging why do people leave that whole bit first of all compiling that, that will be really really great then the the next step is optimization which is another data science term and the optimization is of two levels so typically let's say when i am trying to to um, disc, uh, to provide incentives for a customer base in a certain region what would i do i would first of all go and see what is a look alike region uh, of uh, in, in in my database so so let's say i am trying to design an incentive for, for a set of people so I would look at what are the kind of look-alike people I have in my org f with whom I have already interacted. Then basis that, I, I will start with a structure. And as Anand was saying, if, if we have good measurements on how do people progress on a learning cycle, and I don't mean sporadic like a like a appraisal done in six months, right? But, but daily uh, efforts, it could be as simple as saying this, I'm taking a technology example, this coder typically turns, turns around their work in three days, but suddenly they have gone up to five. That should be a big signal. So, so then you can optimize the whole incentive process for that person itself. And that will be, and the incentive doesn't have to be money, obviously. It could be as simple as a role enhancement. It could be as simple as giving them a team to lead. It could be as uh, different as teaching them, as letting them have time to, to learn another language in terms of coding, right? So, so those are the kind of things, at least what I aspire to build and see uh, from, the, from the community and the providers, which we can use in, in, in our org to further uh, learning outcomes. Thank you so much, Ranjan. We have about five minutes remaining. I'd like to invite a few questions from the audience for these two gentlemen. Um, if anybody would like to know or understand, could we pass around a few mics? There's somebody there at the back. Hello, uh, hello, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Praful Lale. I would like to ask one small question. In the today's digital world, the employees, the rate of attrition, and the behavior of new generation, what we learn is uh, uh, Maslow, Peter Drucker, and Herzberg theories. Now, those theories obviously have become obsolete. So to introduce new automation along with the digital uh, world and make employees understand the meaning, the intricacy of the HR and IR levels otherwise. These boys, they believe now, new generation believe in high salary with the high potential. They may be having high potential, okay, but retaining or remaining in one organization is their development itself. But what they consider is looking around why they leave the company for a better or better salary. The new generation does do not remain in the same company 
and the company has to search for another talent. They have to incur a lot of expenses. So how do we come across and combat with this kind of challenge? Thank you. So, <clears throat> thanks. Uh, I'll take this, right? Uh, uh, fr from an overall perspective, right? So uh, the, the way I look at it like this, right? If, if employees are joining a particular organization, if professionals are joining a particular organization and staying there only for salary, it's uh, uh, the battle was lost way back, right? While hiring itself, right? To be frank. Uh, the, the idea here is to create more currencies, to create more engagements, uh, to create more hooks, which, which a particular professional looks forward to when he's joining and, you know, uh, you know, kind of continuing with a particular organization, right? Uh, I, I, I look at it a little differently, right? Uh, the way you are saying organizations hire professionals, uh, uh, as per the theory of experience, employees are hiring you for one of their purposes, right? The idea is to understand that purpose well, right? And it could, it could, salary would be one part of it, right? And if it's the only part of it, as I said, battle was lost way back, right? You're just, you're just fighting a lost battle, right? The idea here is to understand, you know, what those motivations are, why are employees hiring you, right? What, how and in which way you are addressing those barriers and, you know, making those, you know, that particular growth or move forward as a professional in his life, right? And then I believe that it would be much more, many more hoax than salaries, right? We all have been part of multiple organizations in the past. And believe me, any organization which has, which has substantially, substantially uh, 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 improved the learning and provided the growth of a professional at, holistically, they are the ones has, which, who has the lowest attrition rates, right? So, idea is not that money if you're, if you're only looking at the money the idea is to maybe you know start looking at things a little differently you know in terms of you know why are why professional hiring you folks to towards their development right so that's interesting yes Shandu. sure so um, uh, i have worked with both flipkart and a bunch of other e-commerce uh, as as an employee so i can tell you in an era where none of them have been able to buy our loyalty it's tough to expect uh, you know the, the the generation to be loyal to one org right so i think i think what is important is as as uh, anand was saying uh, the identification of purpose but but again i would say we have to look back at the data of the kind of roles we offer and the and the kind of competitive roles which are there to to be to be fair uh, sir given your your question a startup like mine should have no employee for more than 3 months but but we have been but but we have been able to retain a lot of folks simply because I think one of the th things very early we figured out is the kind of people we hire. What are they actually looking for in their current companies? And that I think was very, very, and that was kind of a sentiment analysis that Ashish spoke about. Obviously, we did it at a very rudimentary with people. We were five people in our company. So, you know, how much we could do. But, but I think that uh, nub, as, as we go along, as we have hired more employees, interviewed more people, we have just sharpened that quite a bunch, saying this role, this is the offering. And, and as Anand was saying, it's not about the money at all. The, the money, people expect it to be in some percentile. Some, uh, and, you know, it will vary by, by the kind of function and the role. But, uh, uh, but, but I can tell you, people will also work at 75th percentile of the market or a 60th percentile, even very, very smart guys. If they believe that what they are doing here in a year, they will have grown or, have, or would have added to their experience so much more. And that experience will vary. And that, I think, is what the new generation wants, if you really, really ask me. They are not looking for jumping around. They are looking for just saying, if, if the salaries are same, which is, which is the place which is just offering me a better experience chart. And that, that's what they are looking for. Thank you so much, Ranjan. Thank you so much, Anand, for your time. I know the timer here tells me that we are one minute over time. We'll take one last question from the audience, and then we'll pack up. So your views on big data, and how organizations are prepared for that? Sorry, sir? Big data. Big data and how organizations, organizations are, prepared for, are prepared for that? Yeah, so, uh, like all means and purposes, it's a means to end, to be frank. 
<laughs> right? Uh, uh, overall, uh, over the last decade or so, what has happened is uh, our ability to draw more insights and to be able to use data that has grown in, you know, leaps and bounds, right? Now, in in and our ability to also collect data, right, and to be able to, you know, kind of store it and process it, that also has increased a lot, right? Now, at any point in time, and th this I keep saying in multiple uh, multiple talks which I have, right, uh, that don't just go for the big data because it's big data, right? Identify what are the business problems which you're trying to solve or what, what is the overall org strategy and, you know, org goals which you have, right? Then identify in terms of what kind of solutions you need to be able to, you know, kind of solve them smart, in a smart, uh, cost-effective manner, right? Sustainably. And that's when, and after that, if big data is the answer to that, right? That is when you bring in, right? Big data in itself is not going to solve any problem. It's bits and bytes, guys, right? Stored in some storage, right? Are your ability to store it, use it, process it, and eventually get those outcomes is what going to, you know, kind of, you know, bring actual value out of that particular big data, right? Once you have figured out the first two parts, rest everything is the technical bits. I believe that nowadays it's it's pretty easy, pretty cost effective to not only collect but also process and you know, kind of create solutions which are which are uh, which easily can bring you, you know, kind of sustainable increase in both revenue and experiences. Thank you so much, Anand. Um, now we are at a risk of being thrown off the yeah, stage. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, all of you, for your patience. Uh, we'll pack up here. Thank you. Yeah. One, one, one question, one quick question. I mean, uh, can we just we get, yeah, we take? Get, uh, all right, okay. Yeah, Let's we get a lot of news on you know uh, thousands of people getting laid off, right? When so many other functions are using data and analytics for growing company, uh, don't we think HR is missing the bus, not using simple data and stopping these thousands of layoff and perhaps forex if we consider their families? Sir, the simple answer is yes, for sure. So uh, you know, um, as Anand was saying, I, I know I think just uh, I'll just add one more thing. Uh, what has really happened is the cost of data storage has gone down. That's it. In the last ten, in the last decade, the cost of data storage has fallen through the hull, and that's why we are able to run now data which earlier would have costed trillions of dollars to just store. But what I think, given my experience as a consultant, uh, you know, every company has a lot of data. But the but the thing is, are they open to using the data and the outcomes that it would show? Because it would no longer be simple uh, simple segmentation. You won't be no longer be able to say my 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 employees fall in this bracket. That's no longer true. The data would throw something else. And the challenge I have always seen is is are is the top management or even the top mid management aligned to using the insight when it comes out? If they are. Big data is just, it will work, for sure. But, but, but you have to give it uh, its due. That's what I think. Right. Yeah, great. Thank you, Ranjit. Thank you.